Well guys, March is off to a pretty great start in the Android world so far. The March feature drop was just released the other day with a ton of new and upcoming features. We just got some additional details of the Pixel Watch 3, and today we got the release of Android 14 QPR 3 Beta 2, which will give us a sneak peek into Android's quarterly update that should be released near the summertime, most likely in June. At this point, we just finished gathering all the changes, and real quick, let's go over everything new in this latest Android update. Before we get started, there are some housekeeping items we should go over. One, we do have some wallpapers to share as just a quick thank you for those who subscribed and just to show our appreciation. They're nothing crazy, just some Google-ish color-themed Android 14 wallpapers that we wanted to pass along to you guys. You can find the link in the pinned comment, so please enjoy. And two, this update is pretty interesting, not in terms of features, but more so the predicament that it put us in. Out of the six or so devices we sideloaded this new QPR update on, four of them bricked and will not boot past the Google logo, including my own personal Pixel 7. This one I typically use to test these updates with, so clearly I would advise against sideloading at this time. But if you did and you bricked your device like me, we have an article on the 9to5 website with some instructions on how to fix it. I'll put a link for that in the description. Now, with all that out of the way, let's go over what's new with Android 14 QPR 3 Beta 2. Admittedly, it is a handful of minor changes that we just wanted to document here, starting with a slight adjustment to the settings menu. At first glance, it might seem business as usual, but taking a closer look, you can see the text, icons, and the spacing overall are much more compact than they were in previous betas. And some of those subtle line dividers are also removed in this new update. It's easier to spot if I take the screenshots and put them side by side. Looking towards the bottom, you can see a whole line of text is visible now where it would be typically cut off in prior versions. So overall, it just seems like some nice UI cleanup. Next up is another minor change, but one we've seen Google implement in different areas of the OS for months now, with the addition of a new graphic in the touch sensitivity menu. If you've been following update videos on the channel, you would know Google's been slowly adding these nice little graphics into the OS over time, and I'm a huge fan of them. It makes the Pixel software feel more alive, for lack of a better term, and they serve as a nice, glanceable tutorial of sorts that gives new users some form of visual feedback to the changes that they're making. We did spot a new option in settings called Allow Camera Software Extensions. To find this, just look under the Privacy and Security tab under the More submenu where we have a toggle for the feature. At this time, we don't really have much information about what this can do for users, but we speculate it will enable more complex camera controls for specific software features like maybe a video version of the photo framing accessibility feature we saw in the Pixel 8 Super Bowl ad. Like I said, this is just speculation, but once we have more info, you'll be the first to know. To my surprise, we did get a few new features that were brought over from the Android 15 developer preview. One is the implementation of haptic feedback for the brightness slider when accessed via the quick menu. I talked about this a few weeks back, but when you hit the highest possible brightness, you get a small vibration indicating its maximum reach. Over the past few months, Google's been adding this all throughout the OS, and I hope they keep adding more instances as it helps make the software feel better to interact with. And they also added added a new keyboard vibration toggle, which was also introduced in the Android 15 developer preview that will disable vibration feedback completely when the keyboard is in use. Last but not least, there is one more super minor tweak we should cover in the settings under the Passwords tab. In previous versions of Android, this tab used to be labeled as Passwords and Autofill, but now in QPR 3 Beta 2, it shows us Passwords, Passkeys, and Autofill. Nothing crazy, but it is worth bringing up. And that's all the major user-facing changes in this update, however, there are a handful of important bug fixes we should highlight as well. Google did list some pretty big fixes like stability issues that caused devices to crash unexpectedly and an issue that incorrectly displayed battery information. There's also a fix with always on display mode causing interference with the double tap to wake gesture, plus a ton of stability fixes behind the scenes. If you want a complete list, I encourage you to check it out, I'll leave a link in the description, but but overall, this entire update is just a ton of small tweaks getting things in line for the summertime feature drop. 
Based on everything we've seen in this patch, there isn't a lot of features, so personally, I wouldn't recommend updating at this time. There are still a few more QPR updates scheduled between now and the final release, so if it were me, I would just stay on the most stable version for the time being. With that said, guys, let me know what you think of the latest QPR 3 Beta 2 update. I know there isn't a ton of new features to talk about, but to be fair, the March feature drop was just released, so we might have to wait for later QPR updates before we start seeing some major adjustments. Either way guys, leave a comment and share your thoughts on performance and stability. Are you experiencing any bugs? And if you did update to the latest QPR build, did you break your device like I did? I'll be on the lookout for your comments, but in the meantime, I'm getting out of here. This is Jordan Floyd with 9to5Google. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.